Hey guys, this is Daniel from Valor Comic Services and welcome to the channel. Today I've got a mail call that I'm very excited about. First, if you prefer my comic book content, please drop a comment, like and subscribe, and let me know that you want to see more comic content going in the future. The book that we got today is a banger. It is Brave and Bold 28 in the CGC 3.0. I'm going to clip the video here, that way you can see the book better and not worry about the light reflecting onto the CGC slab but this book is freaking awesome in total transparency picked up this copy for two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars did not have to pay tax the biggest reason why i like short box is you don't have to pay taxes for those high-end books pick this book up it's a 3-0 now i clean the press books i can do page whitening however i don't think that this book in particular is a good candidate for it over here on the back you can see that it's tan that could help, but the page quality seems like it may be a little bit brutal. Looking over here in that top left corner, that is gonna fall apart super easy. And I don't think that the spine could hold up going through that whole process. So as is, I'm perfectly content with the, my 3.0. This 3.0 presents beautifully. I'm happy with it. I don't have to try to play with it because I would hate to go through the process and it come back the exact same grade. That's not the intent on putting all that work into it because now I've lost time, money, and resources when I have other people's books that need to be treated that way. So let me tell you why I picked this book up besides it being an incredible Silver Age key issue. So last year I started doing some research because I don't have Martian Manhunter. I have a lot of Golden Age books, but Martian Manhunter is a book that I do not have. So I started thinking about, well, what would be his cover appearance? And started going into deep dive with that, as well as trying to think about characters like Aquaman and what their first appearance was. Where their first appearance is out of reach for me, the first cover appearance may be something in alignment with my budget. So I started looking into this, and then and when I began researching it, I found that Brave and Bold 28 was published on January 31st of 1960. Now, that's, that's the key part, is it came out in 1960. This book often gets compared to Avengers number one, which is another giant milestone just on the opposite side of the spectrum for Marvel Comics. I think that while that comparison is a good comparison, a better one is comparing this book to Giant Size X-Men. Now, that does bring up the debate of the ages, where you have Brave and Bull 28, a Silver Age book, versus Giant Size X-Men, you start getting into bronze, copper. But if you look at the key significance for those two issues, that's where your comparable is. With Avengers number one, that's the first appearance of the team, not necessarily any set character. However, with Brave and Bold number 28, you have the first appearance of the Justice League, you have the first appearance of the villain Starro, minor DC villain, not that important, doesn't have that huge significance into the universe, However, Starro was in Suicide Squad number two. It raised this book up, honestly, for a reason why it shouldn't have been, because of how big this book is. So diving into it and trying to figure out what is an added bonus onto this book. Go when you look for your team members of the Justice League, where you have Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, The Flash, Aquaman, and Martian Manhunter. Well, those are huge first appearance books, and a lot of those books, they're, they're not in my budget, they're not in the majority of average collector's budgets either. So going to get those first appearance books, it's not going to be feasible. So I started looking into cover appearances, where say with Hal Jordan, you may not be able to pick up a Showcase 22, which is the first Hal Jordan, but you could pick up a Green Lantern number one. That spectrum is kind of what we're going at here. So pulling it up, Looking at Aquaman and Martian Manhunter specifically, Aquaman first appeared in More Fun Comics, issue 73 in 1941. Knowing that his first appearance is from the More Fun book, well, now we've established that first appearance, what's his first cover appearance? So we start looking into that. So over here we are with More Fun Comics number 73, and it goes down 74, where a lot of these covers are featuring Dr. Fate. You've got some great, great Golden Age covers. I'm a sucker for Golden Age. So anything Golden Age, I'm here for. The history behind it, 
the Dave from Common Book Investments explains Golden Age books and their significance beautifully. I believe I have a clip on that over on my Instagram account. 30 seconds. Takes no time to figure out why these books are so key. With more fun, you see a lot of issues featuring Green Arrow, Spectre, as those were the really popular characters at that time. And you just continue to scroll through, and we haven't seen Aquaman yet. So now we're at 101, first appearance of Superboy. That's a banger of an issue right there. More, for, more fun comics, 101, first appearance and origin of Superboy. That might be worth watching. And if you're wondering what resource I'm using to be scrolling through, I'm using MyComicShop.com. My Comic Shop is a great resource for comic books. I have used them probably for 15 years, and it has never steered me the wrong way. I've gotten a lot of great books just through using them. So more Ford Comics 127. It looks like it would be with the giant whale on it. However, he's not on it. So there's another... Aquaman book. That's, that's Aquaman's Golden Age appearances. But what about his Silver Age appearance? So let's look that up. Now, with Aquaman, a lot of his stories were printed in Adventure Comics. After going through all the Adventure Comics covers, he's featured in none of them. The next book that comes up with big significance for that character is Showcase 30. Showcase 30, pictured here, this is what's considered to be Aquaman's tryout issue. That's where they're trying to test the waters to give him his own solo series and when you look at it i know this book has often been called, referred to as like one of the first silver age appearances for aquaman it's not necessarily true we just nixed that but when you look at the publication date of it where he's featured on that predominant cover it came out in 1961 a full year later than brave and bull 28. so we've covered aquaman jump it over to martian manhunter Martian Manhunter first appears in Detective Comics 225. Now that issue is a banger. That's a great, great comic book to have. However, the, co the cover kills it. That's a book that suffers from this cover. Digging into it, you've got Martian Manhunter popping up in 225 and 226, featured in some small stories along the way. However, in none of those issues is he featured on the cover. The closest that you have to it is in 225 at the top cover where it says, Manhunter for Mars. But since he's not pictured in it, it doesn't really count. Now, there is one book that I've had a lot of other collectors when doing my research say that this would be the first appearance. However, it was published later. That book is Secret Origins number one. Now, with Secret Origins number one, it's a reprint of Showcase 4, 6, 12, Detective Comics 225, World's Finest Number 4. I believe Wonder Woman 125. Hunter is on the cover, but this book was not printed until the year following. With all this bourgeois, what I'm getting at, I've done the research and I cannot find the cover appearances for Aquaman or Martian Manhunter before this book. So with that information presented to you guys, changes things regarding Brave Bowl 28. So here you have the first team appearance of the Justice League, the first appearance of Starro. There's also the first appearance of Snapper Carr, but I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't even know who that is. I can't tell you the first thing about him. I've never even heard that name other than when it's been printed on the book. If I fail as a collector, I fail as a collector. It is what it is, but I don't know who it is. But additionally, this would also be the first cover appearance of Aquaman and Martian Manhunter in a DC story. So that makes it an even bigger key than it already was to begin with. And this book is not cheap. Even in low grades, it's steadily beginning to decline. If you were someone who collects comic books as an investment, especially long-term, I feel like you can't go wrong with this book. It's a banger. Especially for Justice League, villain, and then cover appearance of two major DC characters, you can't go wrong with it. If I'm wrong, I would love for you guys to drop a comment. Let me know where I messed up in my research, and let me know what the first cover appearance of these two characters are. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, guys, be safe.